I'm incredibly excited to name the next senator from the great state of Georgia. This is a bittersweet moment for millions of hardworking Georgians, myself included. Our senior Senator Johnny Isaacson is a public servant through and through. A statesman you can trust to act with dignity and respect, a friend and a, men a mentor to many of us that stand beside me here today. From literally all walks of life and from both sides of the aisle. A man of character who always put policy ahead of politics. Senator Isaacson worked diligently in Washington to champion our veterans and give these American heroes the care and the support that they need. He has stood with our farmers and our agribusiness leaders in tough harvest, bumper crops, and hurricanes. Johnny has certainly done his part to keep Georgia growing. And under the gold dome, he has fought for policies that spurred economic growth, opportunity, and prosperity in every corner of our state. And in our nation's capital, he pushed for strong borders, tough foreign policy, better health care, and the protection of freedom for hardworking Americans as well as our allies overseas. As Georgia Republicans, we owe a debt of gratitude to Johnny Isaacson for charting the course. In my opinion, he joins the likes of Bo Calloway and Paul Coverdale as some of the party's early trailblazers and most impactful leaders. Yesterday at the U.S. Capitol, men and women, Republican and Democrat, honored Johnny for hours. I'm confident that hardworking Georgians from every corner of this state could and will sing his praises for years to come. While Senator Isaacson could not be with us here today in person, I know he is watching this moment right now live feed. So Johnny, on behalf of all Georgians, far and wide, thank you. Your impact and legacy will literally live on for generations to come. We owe you a big debt of gratitude. Thank you very much. As many of you know and have reported, we took an unconventional approach to picking Senator Isaacson's replacement. When Johnny called to announce his retirement plans, I had no, no short list prepared nor no leading candidate in mind. I had no favors to repay and no intention of making any backroom deal. While unorthodox, we opened a process to everyone. We were open, transparent, and successful in finding Georgia's next U.S. Senator. In total, over 500 hardworking Georgians offered themselves for service. Men and women who were willing to put their lives on hold. Mothers and fathers, business leaders, great elected officials, friends and neighbors who wanted to be part of the solution, not just complain about the problems. While only one can go to D.C. and represent our interest in the Senate, I do hope those that submitted resumes will find alternative ways to serve their community and our state. We need more people to roll up their sleeves and get to work. We need more Georgians who are willing to sacrifice their time and talents for the greater good. We need less critics and more public servants. I also ask, I also ask those who applied to rally around our new senator to unite over a shared vision for our future, help champion policies and people that will build a better Georgia. There's one thing I know for certain when it comes to making significant reforms, and that is this, we are better and stronger together. Today, I'm proud to announce that conservative businesswoman and political outsider, Kelly Leffler, will be Georgia's next U.S. Senator.
As many of you know, Kelly grew up on a family farm, growing soybeans and raising cattle, showing animals through 4-H like our girls did, learning about commodity pricing and futures literally on the countertop of her kitchen counter. Kelly has worked her way through high school, college, and graduate school. She began building a successful career and found her way to Georgia, where she met her husband, Jeff, and grew companies that have created jobs, economic opportunity, and prosperity here in Georgia and beyond. From the farm to the New York Stock Exchange, Kelly has really lived the American dream. And I'm confident that she will work every single day to keep that dream alive for our children, grandchildren, and for the generations of Georgians and Americans to come. Like Senator Perdue, Kelly is an outsider. Like Ivanka Trump, Kelly is smart, accomplished, and a savvy businesswoman. And like our president, Kelly is ready to take on the status quo, the politically correct, and the special interest. She knows that Washington is fundamentally broken. She knows that we need to drain the swamp. She knows that our, as our soon-to-be senior Senator David Perdue says, the road to socialism will not run through Georgia. <laughs> Kelly Leffler will stand with our president, Senator Perdue, and their allies in the House and Senate to keep America great. She will end this impeachment circus in Washington and get Congress back to working for the people of our country. She is a woman of faith and conviction who believes without a doubt that life begins with conception. She will champion the pro-life cause in Washington and stop the radical left's abortion on demand agenda. Kelly wants to strengthen our immigration laws and finish the border wall so we can stop Mexican drug cartels from flooding our streets right here in Georgia with drugs, weapons, violence, and fear. Like Senator Isaacson, Kelly supports our veterans and will protect our military institutions and the communities they support here in our state. She is a trusted leader who knows how to get the job done. She will make our small business owners farmers, veterans, teachers, students, and our families proud. I'm excited to appoint Georgia's first female senator in nearly 100 years. But more important, we can clap for that. But more importantly, I'm excited to appoint a lifelong Republican who shares our conservative values and our vision for a safer, stronger Georgia. A patriot who believes in the greatness of America and has lived it herself, who is proud to call Georgia home, and who is willing to serve for freedom's sake. A hardworking businesswoman who will protect the American dream from the socialist nightmare of Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. A real conservative who will defend life, protect the Second Amendment, champion pro-growth policies, and support our president to put hard-working Georgians first. We've seen firsthand the impact of political outsiders like Donald Trump and David Perdue in Washington, D.C. It is time that we send them some reinforcements to keep America great. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our next U.S. Senator, Kelly Leffler. start this morning by thanking Governor Kemp for this important opportunity to serve our nation and our state. I am humbled by this honor 
and I am grateful for the confidence that you've placed in me. Thank you, Governor. Oh, you're thank you. You're going to do right. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Senator Isaacson for his years of service to our state and our nation. He's a true statesman for Georgia, and we keep him and his family in our thoughts and prayers. I know I have a lot of work to do to earn the trust and support of my fellow Georgians. So for starters, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kelly Leffler. I'm a devoted wife, a proud patriot, and a devout Christian. I have lived the American dream and I am blessed to stand here today, but it is a long way from where I came from. I grew up on a family farm, the fourth generation of corn and soybean farmers. I was shy, I had braces on my legs, on my feet. We lived simply, life revolved around farming, church, school, and 4-H. There was a rhythm to our lives. We planted in the spring, I showed cattle at the county fair in the summers, and in the fall we harvested. Sundays were for church and family. I attended public schools and helped pay my way through school, waiting tables. Hard work, faith, and family, this is not a political slogan. This is the foundation of everything I believe. I'm not a career politician or even someone who's run for office. I've spent the last 25 years building businesses, taking risks, and creating jobs. I haven't spent my life trying to get to Washington. So here's what folks are gonna find out about me. I'm a lifelong conservative, pro-Second Amendment, pro-Trump, pro-military, and pro-wall. I make- <laughs> I make no apologies for my conservative values, and I look forward to supporting President Trump's conservative judges. I am strongly pro-life. The abortion on demand agenda is immoral. In the Senate, I look forward to supporting S-160, Senator Lindsey Graham's 20-week abortion ban. And when it comes to protecting innocent life, I look to God because every life is a blessing. In Washington, I will work with President Trump to continue the incredible economic progress our nation has seen. Because of our president's policies, we're growing our economy and jobs at a record pace. Every day, new jobs are created for working moms and dads, for young graduates, and for that waitress just looking for a chance. I've been called soft-spoken, but I've also been called a lot worse. <laughs> in, Congress, <laughs> in Congress, I may not be the loudest voice in the room, but you don't have to be shrill to be tough. And when it comes to fighting for Georgia, I will never back down No one will fight harder for our state, for our nation, for our president, and for our conservative values. Because here's the thing, contrary to what you might see in the media, not every strong American woman is a liberal. Many of us are conservatives and proud of it. with all of the important things to be done in Washington and here at home in Georgia, I am angered by the impeachment circus. I oppose it. It's a distraction and a sideshow. Just imagine what could be done if Democrats would stop fighting President Trump and playing politics and start working together. Think what could be done for hardworking families, creating jobs, expanding access to health care keeping America safe and strong. Make no mistake, 
Washington Democrats want to overturn much more than an election. They want to overturn our way of life because they resent America's success. They can't tell you how much their socialist ideas will cost. They don't care how many jobs will be destroyed. And they can't even agree that they want to protect our borders. The only thing they agree on is that they hate Donald Trump. Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, that whole socialist gang in Washington, they've taken over the Democrat Party. And they will not stop until America bends to their every demand and everything that has made our country great is destroyed. This is the fight of our generation, and this is why I am here. I'm Kelly Leffler. This is who I am. This is what I believe. As an outsider to Washington, I know I have to prove it to earn your trust and your support through my votes, through my priorities, and my actions. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thank you. May God bless Georgia, and may God bless America. All right, we'll take a couple of questions. Anybody got them? Greg. Greg. Uh, Absolutely, I, I will be running in November, and here's why. You just heard that um, I'm a defender of the American dream and of American ideals. I want to fight socialism side by side with President Trump. And Richard? Good luck, um, there has been pushback from some conservative, certain conservative media. What's your reaction to that? And um, uh, did they ever give you any second thoughts about taking this job? No second thoughts at all. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I'm here on the convic conviction of my beliefs in the greatness of America, and I want to protect that. And I'm going to fight very hard, not just for Georgians, but for Americans and the ideals that have made us great. And it just redoubles my uh, conviction that we need to win in November up and down the ticket. Let, let, me just, let me just say this, too, about some of the conservative pushback. I mean, now is a great opportunity to really seek the truth and the facts and learn about the real Kelly Leffler. Uh, you heard it here today. Uh, there's been a, a, you know, a lot of political agendas from Washington, D.C. and New York, but this is about putting Georgians first. Uh, this is why I have made this pick. And now I just urge everyone who's been clamoring to settle down, learn the truth and the facts, and really see how strong uh, this woman is, and what a great job she's going to do for us in Washington, D.C. First of all, I am strongly pro-life and angered by these false claims that have no basis. Um, I, I know why you're asking, um, but look, I've not given a dime to anything related to Planned Parenthood. In fact, some of my strongest political giving has been to pro-life candidates. So I, I do believe every life is a blessing, and that's part of the reason I'm going to Washington. Well, and let, let me just say something about that as well. Um, for, for all those that were here last session, many of them behind me, we had one of the most toughest fights we've seen in our state in a long time, standing up for life with the heartbeat bill. And uh, I can assure you, I would, would not be sending anyone to Washington, D.C. that doesn't believe the same things that we stood up and believed for, uh, not only life at conception at the heartbeat uh, as last year, but also all through life and our value of life when it comes to adoption reform, foster care reform, and protecting the elderly. That is what this fight is about. It is about our values that we believe here in Georgia that make us the greatest state in the country to live, work, and raise our families. And that is exactly what Kelly would be fighting for in Washington, D.C.
for one issue that you're either going to connect on or work in in Washington, D.C., in the Senate that affects directly affects rural Georgia? Thank you for asking that. Uh, obviously, being raised on a farm, I'm, I'm very close with my family still who, who continue to farm. And I'm very supportive of fair trade and being tough on China and uh, making sure that we get USMCA passed and that all farmers and workers <coughs> have fair treatment under our trade, lo trade laws. Now, yeah. I'll, I'll just say this about, about farm and ag. I mean, we're, we've been in a you know, really tough fight. Um, you know, I, I have great appreciation the more I have learned about the trade fight with China with the fight that the president is taking each and every day. I believe our farmers and our agribusiness people, as hard as it is, uh, believe that as well. I know Kelly believes that. I think one of the interesting things that I learned through this due diligence that we did in this process is she told me, you know, I grew up on a, a family farm in southern Illinois. Uh, when a tractor breaks down, my brother still calls me for advice on how to fix it. <laughs> and she told me that I learned about, she said, I knew more about commodity pricing and futures than I did about math when I was a child <laughs> because my mother would write this down on a kitchen table napkin every day for my dad and my granddad to see when they came in for lunch. And that's what interested her in about working in the market. So, I mean, that when you talk about living the American dream, you know, that is what she's been doing through the private sector and those family roots that she has, and those are the values and qualities that we have in our state and that she will represent in the U.S. Senate. Emma? Ms. Leffler, by no stretch of the imagination is what you're signing for going to be easy, and that's setting aside the criticism that you've had to deal with recently. Why do you want this job? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think Governor Kemp just said very eloquently that I have lived the American dream, and I want that for the next generation. Uh, I have a niece and nephew, and I think, you know, I want to make sure that they have the same opportunities. That waitress that's looking to go from waiting tables to working in industry or doing whatever she wants to do in life, I want to make sure we keep that path clear and keep socialism back and, and live what we're living right now and preserve it and build on it. Thank you. I think that's a great way to end.